Well, color me surprised. My, one of my most viewed videos of all time is me working on this tractor, so let's show you guys something else on the Troy built Bronco riding lawnmower. Hey guys, it's Matty Ice, and we're here with another how-to today, <laughs> as you heard, some of the most popular videos of all time, I'm talking like 30, 40,000 views, or me doing an oil change on my Troy Bell Bronco riding lawnmower, and they're actually kind of fun to work on. Uh, working on your own stuff is, there's, you know, there's some enjoyment there, there's, you know, there's something about doing your own oil change and minor maintenance on simple combustion engines that I find really appealing and I hope a lot of you do too. And I'm always grateful for all the comments I get. A lot of people ask me questions and I am by no means an expert or a mechanical engineer or even like a, a mechanic. I'm just some guy who does this on the weekend every now and then for fun. So what uh, I want to show you today guys though is going to be quick change on the spark plug. Something I have not done since this is a brand new lawnmower. It came with it pre-installed and I just went with it. Another thing I want to tell you is, if you guys see this uh, package right here in the Ziploc bag. So I initially bought uh, a spark plug off Amazon in a pack because I was like, man, the spark plug for this particular lawnmower costs like ten dollars and i was like that's pretty crazy for a single spark plug from champion i was like there's got to be a cheaper solution so i went on amazon and found for i believe sixteen dollars a kit now it came with and this is this is literally what came in a plastic bag we got a fuel filter no idea on the Micon rating or anything. It's it's completely unbranded, like generic. It has nothing. It just has the direction that the fuel flows. We've got an air filter in here that actually does look correct for this model. It's got the pre-filter. And then it actually has the air filter. So I think I'm going to use that. And then, for 16 bucks, keep in mind, I also got an unbranded savior spark plug if you've held spark plugs before they have a, a kind of a feel to them this one feels cheap and plasticky on um, the portion down here that's normally ceramic i saw that and i immediately got suspicious i have never liked using off-brand spark plugs i've always had bad luck with that i bought a champion one as well I, I ponied up the 10 bucks because I'm like, something's not right. And sure enough, night and day difference between these two. So, tell me if you can spot the difference between these two. I don't know if you guys can tell, but the Champion Spark Plug is actually longer. And it's got more threads. I counted them. And what I really want to show you guys... Look at the size of that little diode. I know it's hard to show the size of the difference of the diode, but the diode on the Chinese one is easily two times the size of the one that's on the Champion. And the Champion looks like it's got a good gap to it. And the ceramic on here feels actually really good, really nice quality. And man, it's just, we're gonna toss out this garbage Chinese one. And we're going to roll with the Champion OEM. Alright guys, so let's get into taking this apart and maybe, you know, what you need to do to get in here. Because, it, like I said, it's not quite as easy as you might think. Alright guys, so the first thing you are going to do on here is you're actually going to start taking out bolts. To get to your spark plug, you need to take off two things. Air filter housing, to make it easier. And then there's four bolts around this plastic part right here. This is just a cover for the engine. That's all it is. It's nothing important. So what we will do, pull out a little oil dipstick there, set that down. We'll loosen up our oil filter, or oil filter, our air filter housing, which is just right here. We're going to replace that anyway. Just pull it off. It should wiggle free. There we go. Ooh, yeah, that was... A little bit dirty anyway. 
Looks like that was about time to be changed. Okay, and then there will be four of these bolts. They are fairly long threaded and they are going to be 5 sixteenths. <laughs> I had to guess a couple of times, but it's definitely 5 sixteenths. And there is one right here, right next to where you took out the oil, right above the oil filter. You've got another one hiding right back here. I'll actually show you guys. It's hiding right in here by the fuel line on the other side. It's right there. I kind of right. Yeah, there you go. Right in between the uh, gas tank and the plastic housing. And then there's one more right there. So you get all those off and then what do you have to do next? So next you will have to pry it off and it does take a little bit of force especially if you've never done this before but but just grab it and just give it a couple of pulls and it'll loosen just a piece of plastic all right and getting up in front of this engine that's pretty basic i mean here's our air intake up here a little dirty clean it off while you can this is where oil goes so we really don't want to get anything in there and then over here engine with the fins to cool it down and then all the way up here that's the spark plug right here kind of a pain in the butt to get to five eighths there you go that's what it takes to get this bad boy out if you have a little of the extension it'd probably be easier like i do and then just gently work it don't crank on this don't get a big bar but as you see it took a little force to get it out but it's moving now just go slowly. You don't want to, you know, force this thing and break it off. That would be the worst thing possible. And also, so you know, I don't have the battery in here right now. Show you guys right now. Not even connected. So we don't have any risk of this potentially starting on us, which is another thing you should be aware of. All right, guys, and here's the money shot. There's the spark plug. She's actually... A little burnt looking, which is normal, but it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of corrosion. Looks like there's actually some life left in it. But at the very, I know it's hard to see on camera, at the very top, you can start to see a little bit of buildup, and that's when these spark plugs start to go. And considering this has been in there for, oh, I don't know, three, four seasons now, it's time that we did something about it. So let's switch over to the other spark plug and we'll start putting it in. All right, guys, and then, like I said, there's the old one. Here's the new one going in. And let's uh, let's get this on here. Now, when you uh, first take this off, I forgot to mention, you will have this plug wire on there. That's what, you know, directs the good old lightning maker to do what it does. It sends that lightning down there. All right, so you go in threads first, and it's gonna be into this little hole that, that came out of. You can do it by feel. But you want to start this by hand, and it should go in easily, just like that. See, I'm not even like really turning it. It's very little pressure to get it going, so just keep turning. The threads are quite long, so it is going to take a little while to put it in. And then we're just going to use our socket to basically snug it up. We don't need anything crazy. So I can no longer turn it by hand, so we will put our socket back on it. Slide her down. There we go, there we go. All right, so now the good old stick is on there. So we're done with that portion. Let's reinstall our wire right here. It just slides right over top and then down. And you should hear a little click for good contact. So it's on there now, we're good. And it's basically just the same process in reverse. Guide it to the part where it needs to be. Watch out for your fuel line. Just make sure you're going around that. And then look at that. It just sets right back down in there. It's really not a whole lot going on. Again, 5 sixteenths to put this back in. And they are, like I said, they're long threads. So you got to work at it a little bit. But you can probably start that by hand, actually. Uh, they're, not, they're not super tight at the beginning. But it helps to have a little extension to get in here. That's for sure. So then we'll move on to this one.
All right, and then we'll move on to the other side and put in the other ones, and then we will come back and show you guys what's next. Okay, so the top's back on, as you can see. We'll reinstall our little dipstick. We'll be doing an oil change here. It's getting warm out here where I live in Ohio, so we're gonna have to do that soon, but in looking at this one, it's, uh, you know, the pre-filter's got a whole bunch of crap in it. It's not great. Although, I'm kind of worried because this one's like a foam material, whereas the new one's like a sponge almost. And then, here's the old filter. It's actually looking, it might not be coming out on screen, but... Man, it's pretty brown in some spots. It's probably got a lot of dirt in it. Try. I don't think they look that much different than the ones, except, like I said, here's our new pre-filter that I got for 16 bucks in the kit. And here's the old one. This is a much, like, more breathable, you know, film, so... I'll try this one out if I notice any like, problems with the tractor, and I'll obviously switch back, so hold on to it. All right, and I can already tell you, this is like a different size. I mean, it fits in there, but I think this is just like some type of like foam that someone cut up to fit in here. It, as you can see, it doesn't really fit it perfectly. Another issue. Here's our air filter that we just got. Here's our old one. Hmm, is there anything different about these two? Oh, this stupid freaking gasket right here that's not on this one. I don't know what the hell that's about, but I mean, let's try and install it anyway. I mean, I guess it's just an extra layer of sealing. You know, this, which is kind of nice that it separates it, but that was not on the original. Let's see if this will even go on now with this new stupid foam thing in here. Okay. Well, it does not want to fit very well. Let's see if we can force it. We have to get our fuel line out of the way first. There we go. Oh, man, that does not want to go on. I mean, I, I'm like pushing and this thing does not when I have anything to do with this. Amazon screwed me. All right, let's go back to the original one. We'll shake it off a bit, blow it out, and see if we can't get some more use out of it. I'll order a real one so I don't have to deal with this anymore. Okay, and there you go, guys. Uh, the air filter box is back on, so what do we learn? You buy crap from Chinese sellers on Amazon or eBay, you get things that are kind of close, and they ultimately are, are just imitations. I mean, I'm not even going to try this fuel filter. A real fuel filter should be numbered. See like that one I have right there that I put on in a previous video? And if you guys are ever curious about what parts to use, if you have one of these tractors, Troy Build actually gives you a list. But we've got blades on there, accessories, um, common parts like spark plug, air filter, oil filter, fuel filter, drive belts, it's all right there. And again, if you guys didn't know, this is the Kohler Courage 19 horsepower. And I mean, there's one more spot where they keep info on these. It's gonna be on the side of the engine right here. This will have the Kohler information. So what I'm trying to say is, you don't necessarily need to be a genius to train these. As long as you have your original stickers or you have something that can help identify it, you can do these jobs. They're not super outrageous. All right, guys, so that does it for this one. We'll catch you next time. Have a good night.